This year, um, I was really interested in changing our sign bylaw uh, because our current sign bylaw says that you cannot put a temporary or you cannot put on a sign in your front yard unless it's related to a specific temporary one-time event. Um, so it wasn't quite clear to me when we first voted in that bylaw that it would affect those, like, we appreciate Milford police signs. And once I discovered that that bylaw made it illegal to have that sign, um, I sponsored a petition to get that changed. The second petition um, that I want to change was regarding chickens. And this is what caused the one-hour debate that pushed the town meeting past midnight that made Kate question the quorum because everyone left. Um, it was a spirited debate. It was a very spirited debate. Um, very lively debates. Uh, it was foul. <laughs> it was very foul. <laughs> that was your joke. <laughs> that was your joke. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. And so I'm kind of the unofficial chicken czar in Milford now. <laughs> no. No chicken. No chicken. Yeah, you know, avian flu. You know, big deal. Avian flu was a, a topic of debate. Um, exploding chickens uh, was part of the debate. So actually, so because I was very conscious of roosters, and I didn't think if my bylaw uh, included roosters, it would have any chance. I exclude. So it's not. It's up to four hens was my petition. And um, it actually did pretty good. It got 81 votes, 81 to 83. So, um, but it needed two thirds. So even if I had the majority, I would have lost. But yeah. So and then that's why, and that's why I wanted to be considerate of that, right? So, I'd, and um, yeah. So, uh, how I got this whole process started was, so I had I had my idea what I wanted changed, right? And not being an attorney myself, um, I went to town council and Jerry Moody in Milford, um, and I said, town council, here's what I'd like to change. And then I actually was pointing to the wrong zoning law, and once I explained what I was wanting to do as far as the chickens, he's like, oh, actually, what you want to do is change this section down here, which we, we, we um, refer to residential a animals is what, uh, right. So <laughs> residential animals doesn't include three dogs, three cats. Everything else is considered a residential animal and you need a special permit. Special permit application costs $300 or more and you could still get denied. So that seemed absurd to me. If I want four hens that cost me $20 down at Feeds and Needs in Menden, I'm going to pay for a $300 application. So that's what motivated, motivated me for that one. Um, so Jerry Moody was very helpful. Uh, he pretty much wrote the bylaws for me after talking to me, had me review them. And again, you want to do this probably the same time you pull papers for town meeting member, probably around January or February because, you know, he might give you uh, the language and after your review said, well, I actually want to tweak it a little bit. Um, but once uh, we decided on the language and he was very helpful, um, because they were bylaw, zoning bylaw changes, I had to go before the planning board and present my articles to them uh, and either get a favorable or unfavorable uh, recommendation. Unfortunately, it was unfavorable for both. Um, and, uh, well, actually, excuse me, before that, what I had to do was print out those petitions and go door to door and get signatures. Thankfully, it's only 10 signatures when you go for an annual town meeting. So it was fairly easy. If you try to do one during a special town meeting, it's over 100 signatures that you'd have to collect. And so I haven't done any for this October um, town meeting. But it's, you know, through social media, through, uh, you know, just people I knew, neighbors, whatever, it was very easy to collect the 10 signatures. And once I got them validated uh, and submitted them to 
the town clerk's office, they were going to be on the warrant. So then I went to the planning board, had my uh, recommendation there, and I had to go in front of my committee, the finance committee, uh, as um, a sponsor of an article and get their recommendation. Uh, typically, the finance committee, because it's, a, it's not a finance article, they'll just say refer to sponsor. So that just means they have no opinion on it. You know? Pardon? Yeah, they didn't consider the chickens a liability to the town, so they didn't vote against me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that was pre pretty much it. So then we went to uh, town meeting. I had all my notes prepared, and you know, I, I made my argument, and then sat down and just watched the show, and you know, the debate. Chicken limit prorated to acreage. Yeah. Do you think it would have had any more success? Would you think it could have been successful? So, um, this after discussing after the debate, and I spoke to a, a few town meeting members, because um, there was actually another um, article that. Uh, so I need to go back. If you want residential animals, you have to apply for a special permit. The planning board had sponsored an article that basically, basically would have took your right away to even apply in a certain zone. RA, they said, RA is too dense. We don't even want you to apply. Don't waste our time. And um, so we had competing chicken articles, right? They wanted to make it more restrictive. I wanted to make it less restrictive. And they voted theirs down as well. And so what I... What I basically gathered from town meeting was they still wanted a special permit process. You know, they want you to be able to apply. Uh, but after talking to some town meeting members, they said, but if you wanted to have a, an article that said, let's make it free or $10 to apply, we'd be okay with that. So um, I actually spoke to the selectmen about that, and they said they were going to review the, the fee schedule. And they may do it by themselves, um, reviewing them. Three hundred dollars is a little steep for twenty dollars worth of file. Um, so they may actually change it, you know, um, through their uh, board. Yes. All right. So you're using this as an example, a very Correct. simple example. I'm so curious about the issue about is the water issue and the taking that on, and you know who had the gumption to even, I mean, I know it's been a problem for such a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, I was, when I read about it, I was shocked to find out that you didn't even have a public water supply, that it had always been a private company. Always been a private water from company. From the inception of the town. And it affected people surrounding Milford, because we wouldn't eat in Milford, because the fountain drinks had that foul taste in the water, and my brother couldn't give the water to his dog, because it would make his dog sick, and we some pull and spray for the dog. So, I mean, it was... Serious, and um, I can't believe how we've been on actually. Yeah, and and really, like I'm using my uh, articles as an example, but I know a lot of people, you know, what. I, and can we even write finally? Like, how did it? What was the? Yeah. Well, for the water company. Yeah, well, can we continue to talk about the citizen petition process for a few minutes? Well, no, no, no. For the water company. Um, Basically, that had been ongoing since 2012, really. It, it, from that rate hike to uh, actually the, the boiling order, it just took a lot. There was a lot of things going on behind the scenes and negotiating. It took a very long time. Very long time. Very long time. People drinking the water in the Yeah. So if you've ever had, uh, you know, why don't they, you know, the infamous yeah. they, do blame? about it. You know, or why why do they do blank? And you want to change it? This is a and if it's a town authority that does that, this is the process that you would follow. So I know, for instance, a lot of people complain, why don't they have self service pumps in Milford? Because we have a bylaw that says you can't. If you want to change that, go to Jerry Moody, say I want to change this bylaw, and he'll work with you as far as writing the language. Then you can collect your signatures. Sponsor it at town meeting. It really cost the town very much of anything. Like, 
water thing is a huge expenditure, so that's why there's so much pushback, I assume. It, I, I don't think there was pushback. It, that was a totally, like, there was a legal, we had to get the legal authority to purchase, well, we have always had the legal authority to purchase it. We needed to get the legal authority to purchase it at a negotiated price beforehand. Right. That was the big thing. You can't just set the price and say you want it. Right. Before we could have acquired the, the water company, but at an unknown price to be determined later, and we didn't want to take on that risk. So we had to actually change the law through the state uh, to give us that right. And I think Brian Murray is probably a better... Sorry, Mike. Probably yeah, no, I agree. Person. Brian Murray, is, well, as a state representative, would know better. Brian Murray, uh, can you raise your hand for a second? Oh, yes, I was a guy who's sitting over there. Right, right. Yeah. No, 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 I mean, like, he's a, want to talk after Tasha talk. Yeah, well, we're going to have a break after this for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. just so, cause, well, it's a long time to sit here and listen yes. to people talk. <laughs> so, um, that's, maybe we can do that then. Uh, Christine had a question. Okay. So, so I just want to go over it, just so I'm, I'm a little slow to get a talk slow. With sure. Um, so in order to get an article put on the town meeting agenda, I on would, the warrant, yes, um, I would then say, okay, I want this to be changed, or I want to see that put on it. I go to Jerry Moody first. I, I, that's what I would recommend. There's no requirement to go to Jerry Moody, so. but so um, all everything that gets passed at town meeting mm -hmm. has to go through the attorney general to make sure that it's legal, right? We can't say, hey, you know, we're gonna have a tax on every third house to pay every second house. You gotta do the steps right, it wouldn't okay. be illegal. So he takes care of that piece of it. Jeremy, Her, right? he, yeah, he has so to make sure it's legal do, and language is what you mean it to be. Okay, so on a regular town meeting, not a special one, I need 10 signatures. Correct. I need to present what I'm trying to get changed or whatever to Jerry Moody. He does his dance steps, comes back and says, okay, this looks all right. Helps, he would help me write the language. And then it would go, what's the next step after? So Jerry helps you write the language. Then you collect the signatures. Okay. Because the, the language needs to be on the petition ah, when you collect okay. Okay. your signatures. Mm -hmm. Once you have your signatures, yep. you bring it to the town clerk's office mm -hmm. uh, or the registry of deeds, uh, uh, registry of voters. Um, they validate the signatures. Okay. And... Um, once you're, once it's validated and you have 10 good signatures, then it goes on. If it's a zoning bylaw change, mm -hmm. it'll go in front of the planning board. Okay. If it has nothing to do with zoning right. uh, or a bylaw, uh, it'll, it'll just go to the finance committee. The finance committee views everything, whether it's financial or not. So if it's not a bylaw, relative to, say, the, the water company, right? If someone wanted to say, oh, I don't know, um, change the method of who's going to be a water commissioner. Okay, yep. Like, say we want to have them appointed rather than elected, would that have to be a so bylaw change? It wouldn't be a zoning bylaw change, no. so it, I don't believe it would have to go uh, in front of the planning board. It would still go in front of the uh, finance committee, and if they determined there was no financial impact, they would just refer to sponsor, and then you would just have to convince town meeting. Okay. Um, Cassie, real quick, and then we're going to wrap up, I think. Well, I need to, please. Well, what, yeah. What's your yeah. I have a neighbor who came to me and said, I work at high school, the windows are terrible, you can see gaps, you can see right outside, all the winter long, we're sending all this heat right out. What can the town do yes. about it? So, you can be very specific, too. Uh, years ago, someone wanted to spend $75,000 to build a sidewalk on, in front of his street, like on his street. He wanted a sidewalk on the street. So he got, he went around, collected signatures, they debated, he got an unfavorable uh, vote, but, you know, it went through the process. And, and, you know, had they, you know, agreed with him, he would have had a new sidewalk on the street. So. Well, my case, would it be a recommendation to pay someone to evaluate the you would, you would have to be very specific. I would suggest actually going to the school committee because it might be an easier process if you just speak to them because they have the authority to do that um, with, through their budget. Theoretically, it might be already part of their long-term capital plan. It could be. It could be already part of their plans. Um, so you might... Right. If they're already doing it. Um, 
this is more like you know for very specific items that uh, you know a department doesn't oversee necessarily, um, or it can be. You can be very specific. You can say I want to uh, I want to clear. You know, the town owns wooded land throughout town, and you could have an article that says, I want to clear it and turn it into a dog park. You know, so it could be very specific or it could be broad. If that were to go ahead and be passed, who would actually do the work? The town would have to hire someone. Yeah, it, it, there, there's a bid process. There's, yeah. I just want to make very clear that in the only 15 years I've been paying attention, my observations are citizens' petitions just sink, like the Hindenburg, Zeppelin, uh, anything negative you want to say. Have, um, La uh thing, the chicken thing, the other things that uh, I can't even tell you, but the room is not responsive to citizens' initiatives, okay? So let's, not to say that it couldn't actually happen, but it's actually not this wonderful process. Of, you know, Jim, I, just, I need to respond to that. A citizen peti petition that involves money requires extensive review by lots of organizations to ensure that the money is being spent in an appropriate way at an appropriate amount of money. If the citizen's petition changes the the you know the the um, quality of life of people, that too is going to require the expectation that a citizen's petition would come to town meeting without any previous review by anybody to pass has got to be, right at the beginning, considered a very unlikely thing to happen. I'm going to talk about things that took me several years to get done, but in the end, got done positively. So I'm not saying don't do a citizen petition, but have a limited expectation because whatever you're voting on, will impact other groups, other persons, yeah. who all need to be considered in that decision. And that's all I was trying to say, which yeah. is the room has not traditionally been responsive to it, so yeah. just because we're talking about how to do it doesn't mean it will be... Actually, when your petition fails, like with your chicken thing... I got a lot of positive feedback. Yeah. And, and how long till you try again? Well, that's the thing. That's a good it question. depends. If the selectmen go ahead and change the fee schedule, then I won't have to. If they don't, then all I'm going to do is now go ahead, get another citizen petition, but this time attack the fee schedule for the special permit. Because that, that's the feedback I got from town meeting was, we want the special permit process back, in place, but if you, if you want to reduce the fee, that seems reasonable. So um, <laughs> just because your petition fails doesn't mean you can't have a positive outcome from the process. All right, Kate, and then for real lesson. Yeah, no, all I wanted to say is that, I mean, I think Brian could speak to it, is that historically, I think if you're changing, creating a law or changing a rule, it usually takes a while. There isn't usually, it comes up, everyone says it's yeah. not, and it yeah. becomes fast. Yeah, sometimes. That's what, that's what happened with the chicken, and that little chicken. You know, chicken you know, to have to go back several yeah. times. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes laws get presented a few times at town meeting, fail, and then years later, they get presented again with very little changes, and they pass. And we'll use that as a hook and say that we'll be talking about that after the break. Thank All you right. very much, everybody. We'll be back in 10 minutes.